everybody. Welcome back to the Slumber Party Podcast. Today is a BFF episode with Lisa and I. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Very we don't have any. Oh, yeah. it, it, we've just made a game time decision to record right now. So this is the most <laughs> informal. But I, I think these are our best episodes. I always like when people message on um, Instagram, it's usually like after one of these episodes. So let's, uh, I mean, I think this is just really creating the point that we need our own constant reality show, which has been our thesis from the very beginning of our friendship. <laughs> I know, it's so true. Slightly the narcissistic. The things they see. <laughs> <laughs> the things they hear. Yeah, um, I think, you know, like, you and I are so similar in so many ways and so different in other ways, you know? It's like, it really is, like, that perfect combination of two people <laughs> like we need each other to make the one whole awesome person a hundred percent we like we're bringing like together we're a complete human <laughs> right right um for those of you who are watching today's episode uh on youtube thank you don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a little comment. Let's get let's get it out there, yos. Yos? I just yos, I yo, yos. please edit that. <laughs> um I I don't know how I'll ever recover. I think we need to I think I need to quit everything right now. Um based on that. Perhaps you anyway. turn off my my very professional setup uh, for our YouTube viewers. I am Perfect. on you the ground. What? <laughs> uh, well, I would just, this is something that's bothering me and I need to take literally five minutes to figure it out, but you can see, um, I'm, I moved my office to the basement a little while ago. And if you're, again, if you're seeing, and if you're just listening, head on over to YouTube to watch, but behind me, there's this, like, there's my, um, fake, uh, you know, peel and stick wallpaper and it all looks like really nice, but there's that still like 1991 carpet that you can't unsee and it drives me seen crazy. Some life. <laughs> seen various families. Like we need to get it out, but it's like last on our list, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it, it, you know what? I like my little space. Like, I almost don't want to lose it now. It's kind of like it was a concession to be down here. Mm. And now I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not in any rush for the renovation because I, I like having this space a lot. And um, having money also is nice. Cause having money is nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to start Living. a basement renovation. And uh, I think I will probably not be sending my children to post secondary. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> They seem yeah, kind of dumb. they'll live in the basement. <laughs> that was a joke. Children, <laughs> if you're ever listening to this, that was only for comedic purposes. You will right. you will you're so smart that you don't need the money because you'll get a full ride. That's that's right. That's right. Well, at least one of um, them. William. Any <laughs> specifically, sorry, sorry, but that is the one. No, no, no. Okay. Anyway, we have to like start talking about the actual content, or else I feel like people people are already done. They're like, no, this is such an offensive podcast. Did you listen to this yeah. one? She said that her kids wouldn't go to university because they were so dumb. Anyway. No, okay. I said one of them will go to university because he's so smart. <laughs> That's true. And then we named his name specifically. All right. So today's Alrighty. question I, I thought was really interesting. Again, um, actually, this person, this is good. So people don't think it's you again, Lisa. Um, uh, this person left their name. It's Jessica. Jessica left us a voicemail. Um, and I really like this question. So we are going to jump right in. So Listen up. Hello, baby's best sleep. I hope you are all having a fabulous day today. My question or concern is mostly surrounding the time of year we're heading into. So it's coming from summer, going to fall. The days are getting shorter. The nights are getting longer. My son is two and a half years old. He normally wakes up right at 6.30 every single morning. 
But now that it's getting darker out, it kind of takes a little bit longer and we end up having to wake him up. Is there any sort of piece of advice that you would have in terms of waking up toddlers as opposed to them naturally waking up on their own? Because my biggest concern is that he's not getting enough sleep, even though he's going to bed at the same time he has the entire summer. Thank you so much. All right. So this is such a great question. Um, And I feel like we have a lot of variations of this question. So we might get a question similar in, in the realm of, you know, what do I do? And by the way, sorry, before I go on, thank you, Jessica, for giving us that wonderful question. Um, And remember, folks, uh, you can head over to our Instagram, uh, click on the link in bio, you will find our voicemail, you can leave a voicemail completely anonymously. Um, That's, that would be great. And we use your your question on the podcast. Anyway, Okay, so on that note, uh, you know, Jessica's question is common, and it's usually around the concept of how much interference, essentially, do I need to have in sleep? And that's a great question. Um, I have my thoughts. Lisa, what are your thoughts as a mom of three? What are your, I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm, I'm curious as to like what your natural inclination is as a non, as a person who doesn't talk with people about baby sleep every day. Right. <laughs> well, you do, just indirectly. I'm the, yeah, I'm the, I'm the, the test subject on the other hand. Um, yeah. no, I, like, even this morning, um, I, my, my little one, she, you know, she's like the unicorn baby who I've never had this before with my other two, but she is a sleeper. Like she sleeps mm-hmm. longer than my older kids. And so, yeah, um, with the time change and she does tend to go to bed a little later than what her age children do because she's got preteen brothers and it's a whole it's a whole thing and it does work better for Mm -hmm. the family that she goes to bed a little later but that means she wakes up uh, exactly right before we have to basically (laughs) eat and leave like there's just such a short turnaround time so this morning for example, it's really gloomy and it was snowing and all the things. And um, yeah, I mean, I walk in and I just open those blinds about half an hour before I want her to wake up, right? So I open the, the shades, mm-hmm. let her start waking up. Maybe I'll give her a little tickle just to get her started. And um, yeah, I just give her the grace of that half hour to wake up. But I always wake. I, I try If it's not you the weekend, okay. I always wake Um past like eight o'clock or seven o'clock I I have to otherwise the whole day is and and what would yeah okay that's my question so like let's say so two scenarios for you here then so what would happen I I understand why you'd want to wake her during the week kind of I mean she goes to school like let's go but during the weekend what is your plan and what happens if you don't wake her up um, I don't know. She just okay. stays uh, like on the weekends. Yes, I do let her sleep in. But again, yeah. she's it's like the the kid thing, right? Like she yeah. wakes up earlier on the weekend and tends to sleep in. Oh my god, that's so annoying on the weekdays. <laughs> that is just that is how it okay. is. Like I, even with my yeah. unicorn, I I don't win there. Um, okay, but well, that's- but um. On the weekend, I do try to, like, if she falls asleep in the car and she needs that extra nap or that little bit of rest, we let her, you know, especially Mm -hmm. with cold and flu season. And we've been sick for a while, like, on and off as a family. And so catching up on that little bit of sleep, even on the way home from school. We come home from school later, like, after four. And, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work that great that she takes that little 20-minute nap on the way home. But sometimes it works out well in that, like, it just kind of gets her to bed at her regular time, which is a little later than normal. Yeah. Totally. But, yes, to your point, I really try not to obsess with that extra half hour, hour, whatever. It's, like, I always believe that children would will take what's theirs like follow Mm -hmm. their clues and if Mm -hmm. it's a consistent thing then you address it but if it's you know if it's 15 20 half hour you know here and there I I really try not to think about it too much there's so many other things to think about there's a lot going on I feel like you've (laughs) just 
like sounded the cry of every parent who has more than two children. It's like what I I can't I can't think about that. <laughs> it's, that's it, one there's of your no room to track, and I just yeah. don't have the capacity. <laughs> yes, exactly. Totally. That's why like um uh third time parents and plus are my favorite clients because they're like, yep, we'll do. I have no other questions because I cannot fathom do 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 we're done great bye yes but um, on that note i have so much compassion for first and second time parents because it is such an overwhelming like thing and it, it, sleep is just made to be this like weird yeah. scary thing that we have to constantly think about which like i don't really i don't i try not to address it that way you know i try to totally more natural <laughs> yeah well it, and i think that there's a I say this every week. There's so much information. A lot of it is conflicting. Yesterday, I read this piece by Slate on the internet that just like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I just really, and I'm hoping it happens, it, even if it's not me, that we just have like a better, more nuanced conversation around children's sleep that isn't like so polarizing or it's this or it's that or there's this side, or there's that side. It's like, I hate it. I hate it. And I feel like um, because children are such individual people, I don't, I truly believe you can't really take a stance on anything until you, uh, I don't know, uh, like until you've walked a mile in everyone's shoes, essentially, which is impossible. But anyway, so uh, yeah, I I think that um, there's a lot of information Every parent wants to get it right. There is this concept of a right answer. Um, And I love that you shared first, Lisa, because I think that's um, the exact sort of thing that I would say, that it really depends on your child, right? So I have two kids, and my first gets up at the crack of dawn, loves life, just wants to jump in head first. The other... It's like, oh, all right, I'm here. It's like getting up is like, you know, a struggle. And I mean, it's not like she's tired, but she's like me. She would sleep. I remember, I know this is like very weird, but a formative memory for me is uh, back in the very early 90s. Oh, how much? It might have been like 1988 or 89, but the we had just got a preview of the Disney Channel, and one of the things on the Disney Channel was Mouseker size or Mouseker size Mouseker Mouse Mouseker size. That sounds weird, Mouse-ker-size? but it was like yeah. Mickey Mouse exercise class for yes. kids, and I was like, I must do that, and my mom of was like, Oh my god. I know. <laughs> you are you from the start. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I was like, was I have to do that. Like a pre Peloton. <laughs> No, not yet. That was waiting for me in the future, though. Um, so I, I was like, okay, I'm going. I'm gonna do this. And my mom was like, very like serious. And Amanda, that's really early. And I'm like, I don't care. She's like, I'll wake you up for it, but I don't think you're gonna like it. And I remember the first day she woke me up for Mosker size. I was like, no, no. <laughs> and it was like six a.m. Like it wasn't crazy. Um, but anyway, so kids have their own thing. I I have the like inclination to kind of answer this question in two ways. And so number one, I would, if I had this question myself, I would experiment with outcomes. Okay. So like one of the things that often comes up uh, with friends of mine, especially like I can't, I keep waiting for this to happen. It hasn't happened yet. But um, like on the weekends, we will go see friends of ours who also have kids. We'll have like a later night. My kids are probably in bed closer to nine. They're six and eight. I wouldn't have done that years ago, but they, they're in bed closer to, to nine-ish on the weekends. And most people I know, my kids' friends, my friend's kids will sleep in they will sleep in because they were up later and my kids don't. And the only way for me to know that for sure is to do it. 
right? Now there is, there could be a part of me that's like, well, I don't want to risk it in case they don't sleep in because then what happens? I'm never going to experiment with this concept or thing I want to try because what if it doesn't work? And what if my whole day is horrible? And then we spiral and then we end up doing nothing. This is why people like don't transition their babies for naps on time. This is why like we get it stuck into patterns. So my biggest thing would be to answer Jessica really directly is I would experiment with this a little bit. So obviously I would let your baby sleep if it's kind of happening naturally. I mean, that, that, that tells me I wouldn't want to mess with that to a certain degree. If you have to kind of get them up and go to daycare or you have a whole schedule, um, then you might want to start waking them, um, at the appropriate time. But if they seem to need more sleep, because of this time of year, um, for Canadians anyway, uh, we tend to have more darkness. We have more darkness at night. We have more darkness in the morning. You might get away with an earlier bedtime as well because it's so dark here. <laughs> like it's starting to get dark at like 445. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you could probably also like make up for any lost sleep on the front end of your sleep at bedtime. So you can kind of play with those times. If you don't have any schedule, if you don't have daycare, if you're just living your life or if it's a weekend, a Again, I would kind of see where it lays. Now, the, the tricky bit um, about sleep ends in general are when you have a baby who's on more than one nap, because then you have to imagine that the sleep in, every kid has a set amount of sleep in them. It's predetermined, whether that's, you know, 12, 13 hours, 14 hours. Um, I would say that that changes. It gets less as they get older, but still it's a set amount in that time. If you were saying, I'm going to let my child sleep in, then that will probably mean a shorter nap during the day or protest more protests than usual at nap time because the same amount of sleep drive is not present at nap time or bedtime for whatever the case may be. And let's say, you know, so then people will say, okay, no problem. Let's say my kid sleeps till eight one day and normally they go to bed at 10. I'll just push their nap time to 11. I wish it was that easy. Generally, I find that babies, when we've totally changed when their sleep is happening, they protest the fact that they're sleeping at a new time. So it's like their body wasn't ready. Their body didn't have the chemical soup ready to sleep at 11. So now they're really angry at you, despite the fact that it's the exact same amount of um, time mm -hmm. that they've been awake, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, generally, if you're on one nap, you can be a little more loosey goosey. That tells me that you have an older child and we can start being a little more flexible. So, um, if you were speaking and Jessica is specifically to toddlers, I say, try it and see. Um, I probably wouldn't let them sleep longer than an hour in the morning just for that nap reason. And if they are not napping, then I say have at her and enjoy, like or truly. Um, but yeah, it's. I think people really want a very specific answer. But the, then the truth is, I say we're going to have problems with naps when you, you switch and there's 100% going to be that baby who's like, oh, I, I don't care when I nap. I can nap at 10. I can nap at 11. And we've lost out on, on an opportunity to try. So even with my clients, like I say that our sleep plan is a working document. All my suggestions are, are open and fluid. And if a, a client is really kind of insistent about something, I will always try it out. I'm like, okay, great. Let's try this out. Let's do this. Um, I'm really, really open to making those things work, um, obviously, where it makes sense. Does that make but, sense? And going back, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And and going back to the Slate article, it's like what you said sort of at the end. I watched your Insta stories this morning. Um, that it just again, it's like you know, each child is individual, each family's circumstances are individual, and so to focus so much, it's like sleep training and breastfeeding, right? Like the two, yeah. like, oh, like, oh, okay, mo moms don't have it hard enough, please, please throw in some shame with the sleep and the boob, like, that's just please. that drives me completely insane. Um, yeah, 
And so it's the same concept, right? Like if breastfeeding isn't working for you for whatever reason, ditch that thing. Throw that thing back in your booby holder, <laughs> you know, throw a bottle in your baby. Like you need to have your kid um, on a schedule that that works for you, for the family. Yeah. And that is always the cornerstone of every sort of smooth running family, right? When I'm from totally. the outside anyways. I- I actually think that goes with um, a friend of mine said this to me a really long time ago when I went back to work Um, and it was a hard decision because I went back to work early and she had said to me that she had stopped making decisions for her kids and made decisions for her family instead. And like, how is everyone functioning? And that has stayed with me ever since, you know, eight years later. And I see that in my work, it really informs my work. So, you know, if you, if your kid sleeping in gives you an extra hour and everyone is fine, then do that. Like, really, I don't think that this stuff is as polarizing as it needs to be. Like, Mm -hmm. what I really liked, we keep talking, so Slate, um, the journalistic blog, I don't even know what it is. It's a website that has, like, professional writers. I read Slate all the time. Slate also has a Mm -hmm. ton of really great podcasts that I like. But, um, uh. I was bummed by that Slate article on sleep training. I felt like it was so basic, bitch. And it was very much like, oh, you either want to throw your baby into a crib and let them scream unassisted for hours and hours, or you're you're co-sleeping and breastfeeding and the baby is on you. And I was like, this is not where we are. This is so outdated. Um, and anyway, so this particular Slate article – um, kind of, it's funny because she pretended to be like, oh, I still don't even know where I stand on this. But the whole article is so anti-sleep training. I can't even tell you. And then so the comments were actually really good and really thoughtful about people saying like, I just feel like you can't make this decision until you have your child. Where you know, someone had said, I didn't sleep train my first and I did the second or vice versa. Like there were very different kids. Um, You're going to have kids like the author of this article had mentioned how at 10 months, she just put her child in their bed and then they started sleeping on their own. I believe that that happens, but those people would never hire me. Like this is not, we're talking about very different situations. And, And what I think is we have Uh, what we have is confirmation bias of like, well, this is my experience. Therefore, people who can't hack it, like I can hack it, there's something wrong with them or they're, they're missing a piece that I don't have. And I am here to tell you, having worked with so many clients now, like literally thousands over the last years, it's not that my clients can't hack it or they, they haven't tried. I'm their last resort. Who would want to pay anyone money to do something that would be free? Like, give me a break. Anyway, yes. a little bit of a tangent, just this slight, but it goes along the same line of it really depends on your child. Don't be afraid to experiment and you might not get it right, but that's information and you can just go back. Like you can't really yeah. screw it up. No. And I always want to add to this is that you can also, I know, even though we're talking about Jessica's toddler, um, I assume maybe like two-year-old, right? Or, But even Guessing. still, even still, I think that including your baby into the process and having a calm voice, like with really with anything and everything. Like I love cooking, but hate to cook with my kids, for example, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like just preparing them and myself emotionally for that and like functioning at a bit of a different frequency like turning my brain yeah. off and loving mats um <laughs> would be another suggestion for for like a, a mom that let's say has some some um oh my gosh my brain um that is like uh, doesn't want to try this or apprehensive yeah. exactly okay so she you know like, just talk your child through it like oh yeah. here's 
here's what yeah. we will try. Here's our cute little routine. Let's try totally. this. Let's say, try that. something new. Yes, just all and like involving your child, right? Into into yeah. this. Like what PJs do you want to try out for this earlier or later bedtime? You know, all of those things I feel like made such a big difference for me in terms of parenting styles and with yeah. all different with the 20 personalities of my three children. <laughs> um <laughs> it's it helps to sort of like even just talk yourself down when you're nervous yeah. about something, right? Like if you're just yeah. explaining it and over explaining it to your kids and yeah, just vibrate at a different frequency when you're around them, especially around polarizing things like sleep, eat, like eating mm-hmm. right now, I feel like is a whole other battle I have to deal with too. <laughs> so yeah. I'm drawing on that experience of just trying to stay completely neutral and unbothered by the fact that my child refuses to eat on that note as well like I I I have um I have like an uh instinctual knowing about something and this is like a weird thing to talk about I I had dinner with my friend um Dr. Tanya Kotler who is a unbelievable maternal mental health uh, psychologist she she just an overall psychologist that knows everything but anyway and she was on this podcast so if you're interested in her go take a look at her episode um she's great she is great and she's an expert in my certification class as well and she's always one of the favorite parts of of the course when people do their reviews they always talk about her anyway I sort of was explaining this thing to her and she was like yeah that's a thing but anything that you are anything that you are suggesting to your kid whether it's around food sleep diaper changes if you have anxiety about it they will mimic you immediately there is yeah. nothing, there are no secrets. I learn this and I talk about this all the time. Absolutely. If You know, when I talk, especially with my toddler clients and preschool clients who are doing sleep work for the first time, and we're talking about three, four and five year olds who've never slept alone. There's a reason for that. It's because not doing it terrifies the parents or the protest terrifies the parents or the parents have a thought like I might be damaging or hurting my child. And I always say, if you have that thought, we can't do this work or we shouldn't. And there's nothing wrong with that either. But you you can't be in this middle place where you're like, oh, I want to do it. Do I want it? You have to like be committed. You have to be confident. There's an energy like you are the leader. They pick up on every single thing. If you yeah. feel anything, they will know. And if you are saying, go to bed and you're not believing it, they won't either. If you're saying, I want to try this new thing with your nap routine and it's they're not buying it like it's not going to happen if you are this is a big one if you are traveling and you say my baby won't sleep the whole time well you've written your whole future of course they will and it, it's like i was having a conversation recently with a client about um my children don't have any hang-ups about sleep or sleeping independently because i never have i don't think it's bad i don't think i've damaged them i don't have any energy around it. And because of that, my my kids don't have any energy around sleep. There's not fear around sleep. There's no bullshit around sleep. They're like, yeah, we like sleep. Bye. Like this morning on my stories, they asked yeah. me, I'm like, what are your thoughts about sleep? She's like, I get up at six. I'm like, I know you get up at six, but like, she doesn't have any thoughts about sleep. I never have any thoughts about it's sleep like because my parents were like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Once I'm in it, I love it. Um, I love it. I, I, so that's what it is like and it, i i i ca- kind of coined something in in my conversation with this client i said you have to have car seat confidence about everything that you do and so what car seat confidence is kids fucking hate car seats they hate them on and off for the whole however many years they are in them oh especially yeah. as they get older and i get it you put them in a seat you strap them down in, in tight, tight, tight things, they can't move. It's awful. And so they hate car seats. But we don't say, oh, my God, you shouldn't be in a car seat. There is an energy in our body that says, 
no, this is a non-negotiable. Of course, you're going to be in a car seat. If we get into a car accident, something bad will happen to you. There is a uh, uh, energy that you bring that children get. I'm not fucking with that. I don't fuck with that energy. There is something there. There, they mean business. Okay. That was me in sleep uh, uh, very unconsciously. Like I didn't make that happen. But when it comes to any change, when it comes to anything that you were implementing, any experimentation, you have to be car seat confident or it's not going to work. And you shouldn't try until you are car seat confident. Yes. And if you can't be car seat confident, you got to let your partner do it. <laughs> yes. Get, yes. Yes. Yeah. Get in there. Um, get that partner yeah. in there. Get them doing all the things. Lisa, right. we're at That's 30 right. minutes. A full 30 minutes. Wow. We wow. 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 For you and I. <laughs> I know. We can go for hours. We should do like a live on TikTok and just talk and talk for hours. Do you see people doing that? Is that wild? I do. You? You it just is wild. Sit, sit there and look at the screen and talk and talk and talk. I'm like wow. And, and I feel like I know that dude has kids. Watch. He has this yeah, time. Exactly. <laughs> it's amazing. As always, yeah. you can Anyways. find us on Instagram at Baby's Best Sleep. You can find Lisa at BBS underscore L I Z A. Um, you can book a call with us at Baby's Best Sleep dot com. Uh, certification begins in uh, two months and two days, and we are probably already half full, which is pretty bananas. Um, so, if you're interested in doing this work uh, with your your community, if you're already a mental health practitioner and you want to add these um, qualifications to your repertoire, this is amazing for you. Um, I think that's it. Anything else you want to say, Lisa, it. before we go? We did it. I just have a good I, one. I, like, I'm going to shock you <laughs> with the fact that I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> on, good on all of the things we talked about yes it would probably be a better podcast if you didn't and people know, would have to sit yeah, through we'll our, find our somebody else. okay all right you're out <laughs> all right see you later everybody bye <laughs>